Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce Ursula uh, von Riddingswald. Ursula is an international renowned sculptor whose work for Paul is featured on the cover of tonight's program. For Paul is a magnificent sculpture, I wonder which Paul that is actually, is a magnificent sculpture at Storm King Arts Centre. Many of you are well acquainted with Ursula as a valued member of our community. Ursula, can I welcome you to the podium? After Ursula, we'll be hearing a few words from, from the Paul. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to talk about the things that are more difficult for my husband to speak of. Um, in terms of a very general background about Pearl Meister, his mother, um, we have not been able to uh, rake together too many facts, uh, but Pearl Meister is his mother. She was his mother who died giving, his birth, giving him birth. Uh, and the few descriptions that we've been able to get, and we've sort of gone through different parts of the country seeking them, but uh, that she was beautiful, uh, that she read a lot, uh, that she enjoyed taking baths, she had thick, dark hair. I seem to need images behind the, the titles or the words. Um, we even managed to get something that looked like a photograph of Perlmeister, as somebody said it surely was that. It was a woman who was crouching and she had a child by her. Uh, we even had our daughter hold up this photograph at our wedding day, thinking that her presence was there. This was 24 years ago. But in another number of years, we found out that no, this was not her on the photograph. It was some other woman who enjoyed that event. Uh, <laughs> but um, there is no image, there is no photograph of, of Perlmeister. Paul and I went to the cemetery where she was buried. Uh, and before we left, we tied my favorite scarf around the tombstone. Um, we, uh, Paul, during Paul's childhood, uh, until he was 21, the fact that he had uh, a biological mother uh, was kept from him. Uh, the stepmother and the father in rearing him felt that he was such a, a difficult uh, a, a behavioral uh, problem as a kid, you know, th that they kept this from him thinking he would be impossible if he found out about his biological mother. Um, this is kind of in keeping with uh, a, a, a cruelty received throughout his childhood. Um, they also made sure they collaborated on his not being able to see anyone from the family of his biological mother. Um, on, is, what, what this did is it, it made us yearn and want to concretize this woman, to make her into something that was much more real than that which was allowed during his entire uh, good part of his life. Um, we have a house in the country that is a, a very modest house, but it's found on a land with two rivers, very beautiful small rivers that join. We have a little bedroom in there that used to be a closet, and my husband had the idea of uh, making windows on that closet wall so that we have a corner full of windows. We look out those windows, and uh, lying in bed until sometimes early in the afternoon. Uh, this is where we think most clearly. And we had schemes of actually uh, taking uh, Perlmeister's body out of that cemetery and putting her in the part near the river where we look, where we can gaze out through that window again to try to bring her closer to us. Uh, of course, it's, it's more than a little illegal. Uh, um, 
In 1998, Paul received the MetLife Award, uh, which which carried with it uh, a, a modest amount of money. And it's at that time that we first thought of the possibility of this prize. And it's at that time that I think the foundation for that prize was formed, so that by the time the year 2000 came, when he won his Nobel Prize, um, um, we decided on the way between his laboratory and Caspery Hall, knowing that there were going to be people waiting here, the, the, the uh, publicity uh, people, the, the, the newspaper, the journalists, were going to be waiting here and asking us that very question. And we had in back of us what trailed, you know, our, our grandson with, with, with a volume of tulips, you know, that were something like five dozen that were yellow that were kind of rolling their heads over. So we marched with our daughter, our son-in-law, and our then uh, little uh, Natasha grandchild here to Caspery Hall. And, and Paul asked me, what would you think about our are leaving this money uh, for the Pearlmeister Prize. And of course, uh, this is the day for four years now that we have been waiting for. Um, I cannot tell you what a personal victory this is. Uh, it is the most important decision we have made um, that was incredibly emotionally healing for my husband and therefore awfully good for me. Um, and uh, that it's a victory uh, in a uh, broader sense for all of the reasons that uh, the two women that spoke tonight so eloquently have uh, uh, said in terms of the women scientists. Uh, and, uh, um, and to see Perlmeister sort of float in the realm of that which is wise, that which is nurturing, that which is healing, just feels so good. Uh, we feel like like we both got this um, incredible gift. Um, I I want to thank Rockefeller University enormously, um, um, Marnie Amhoff, who has worked incredibly hard uh, on on realizing this, uh, 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 and and. Um, uh, Paul, nurse, you who have embraced this in such a strong way right from the beginning. But, uh, but I think Paul, uh, my husband, will give uh, you a better, better sort of more specific thanks. Uh, and, and it's so nice to have all of you here uh, to celebrate this with tonight.